wp-get web dev tutorials for all user levels. Okay, so we've got another uh, global elemental or community inspired uh, tutorial from this question here. Uh, please excuse the noise in the background. My uh, room where I do this is next to a main road and a fire truck just decided to pull up outside my window. So moving on to the question. Uh, so Robson here asked about how do we get these little uh, partial borders on the edges of uh, widgets or containers. Um, and there's multiple ways you can do this, but there's two main ways. And I'm going to demonstrate those two main ways and the pros and cons of, of both of those. If we head over to a mock-up that I've done. So this first mock-up, I'm using uh, CSS classes with a before and an after pseudo element. Um, the advantage of doing it this way is that you can make them very consistent. So all I have to do is provide uh, classes on the wrapper that I want these to be on, and it'll automatically stick those in there. And the way I've done it, you can actually change the color of these on a per use basis um, using CSS variables. Um, so that way, if you're using one on a dark background, you can make them a lighter color. On a light background, you can make them a darker color, depending on what suits your design. So that's the first option I'm going to go through. The second one down here uses um, extra elements that are positioned absolutely. So I've got a extra element at the top here. I'm actually using containers. So I'm, I'm demonstrating this with Flexbox containers. Uh, you could just as easily do this using sections and columns. You just use a slightly different widget here, which I'll explain. Uh, so that is actually, on the left-hand side here, is actually a section that I've added and I've positioned it absolutely to the top left. And then I've got another section at the bottom here, which I've positioned to the bottom right. So that's the two different ways of doing it. Now, the advantage of doing it this way, you've got a lot more control over each and every time you use this on where they're positioned, their sizing, all that sort of stuff. You can control more. Um, I kind of prefer consistency, so I prefer this uh, top uh, version, because uh, the other side of this too, and it's really not a huge issue unless you do a lot of elements, um, but when you do this way, it does add more DOM elements than doing it the, uh, the first way. So if you're worried about keeping your DOM size down, uh, option A at the top here is a better option than option B at the bottom here. So let's head over to the actual uh, where are we? The uh, demos here. So again, I'm using containers. Um, with the first option, I've just got a uh, an outer container. Just realized I've accidentally, what I've done, I've moved stuff around, sorry. This editor can be a little bit uh, dicky at times with your drag and drop. So let's go back to my main one that I've worked on. So the top one here, this uh, white background, I've got a left column container and a right column container. And the col right column, I've just got a, a image in there. So in my left column, I've just got an about us container. Um, and I'll put a heading, text editor, and a button in there. So looking at these containers, so looking at the left column, all I've done here is put a 4REM uh, padding on it just to give us some padding around between the outside of that container and where this inner container here starts. And then in the About Us, which is another container, um, I've got a one REM padding. That's just to give me padding between the edge and where all this starts here. So if I increase that, for example, I go to two REM, I just get more padding inside that container. So the outside one is, we change that. So I'm just changing the outside padding. Um, and for the inner container, I'm changing the inside padding. OK, so on this inside container, so I've called it the About Us container, all I've done is added two classes, which is corner-cap-tl for top left and corner-cap.br for bottom right. OK, and that's all I need to do to get the top and right, top left and bottom right corner caps here. Now the CSS to do this, and I'll put this up in the tutorial. Uh, if we look at our site settings, 
uh, custom CSS. I've got a lot of CSS in here because it's my uh, muck around site for solving problems. And I always comment out comment blocks of where my CSS is. So what I've done here is I've created some variables so we can access those, which I'll show you a little bit later. Setting my cap size to two REM, so the actual height uh, and uh, width and height of that is two REM. If I change that here, three, you can see that they, they get bigger. Make it four, and they get bigger again. Uh, let's make it three. All right, uh, and black, that's the default color. Uh, let's make it orange. Uh, actually, let's make it green because I got the other one orange. Okay, and now my uh, actually I'll make them wider so you can see the color. So I set my uh, 21 pixels, two pixels. So I've got a two pixel wide green uh, cap uh, that's three rem in width and height. Okay, so just by setting these variables up here. So where I apply this, so if you remember on that about us container, I added this corner cap TL and corner cap BR for bottom right. So I'm using the before pseudo selector where I'm adding a content, an empty content, position it absolutely, set it at the top and left and set my width and height based on these variables up here, my border top and my border left based on these variables up here. Uh, for the BR, I'm using the after pseudo selector. Again, all that's the same, except for I'm setting the border bottom and the border right to those variables. That's pretty much it. So because I've used these variables, so if I wanted to change the color, this corner cap color. Take that. Because I've used CSS variables on this about widget here where I've got these uh, two classes, so I've got the top left and the bottom right. If we go to the attributes and add a style, because we want to set the style or add to the style attribute of this, uh, pipe to separate the attribute name from the value, corner cap color, make that um, orange. Okay, now, you won't see it in the editor because Elementor does not pass these custom attributes uh, in the same way as it does the other CSS in the editor. So you won't see anything change here. If I update that and then go back to the demo page and do a control F5, they're orange um, and they're two pixels and they're three REM in size now. Okay, so that was because I set the color of orange and the style. If you want to set the, um, say we only want a tiny corner cap on this one. So let's go into our attributes and kind of put a semicolon. So it's CSS that we're doing, semicolon, uh, CSS style rules, as you say, corner cap size, and we'll make that um, one REM, okay? Again, you can't see this change in the editor. So if I update that now, and then go back to this page and I do an F5, you'll see these will get smaller. And now I've only got a one REM width and height, so you can override those variables on a per use basis. Um, we could add other variables in there if you wanted to, where we can set positioning. Um, so you can actually do a lot to change the way these work on a per use basis. Um, but this is the simplest way of doing it, I think. Um, now, so the other way, the one, down here in black. Um, what I've done with that is there is no, that's exactly the same structure. Um, there is no uh, CSS classes on, on this because I'm not doing this with CSS. What I've done is I've added container at the top here. So using my navigator, I've got added a container at the top here. Now I'm using containers. If you are using sections and columns, which you probably should still be using uh, because uh, Flexbox is still not a production feature. Um, I'm doing all my tutorials using Flexbox in the hope that it becomes production soon. Uh, and my tutorials aren't outdated, um, you know, pretty much as soon as I create them. So, uh, but if you're gonna do this with sections and columns, I would suggest you use the spacer widget instead of a section, uh, sorry, instead of a uh, container. Um, spacer widget will do exactly the same thing. So if I got a spacer and added that to here and then use the attributes on that, that'll do exactly the same thing. Just gonna go back there. 
Okay. So now we've got a, so what I've done is I've done a left cap, which is a container. Again, you can use a spacer. And all I've done with this is in my layouts, I've set my width and my max height, because I'm not putting anything inside it. It's going to respect that max height. So I'm setting this to 70 pixels wide and 70 pixels high. Um, that's all I need in these settings here. Uh, in my style, I've gone to the border and I've set the top width to one, uh, the left width to one, the color to orange, and that's all I'm doing in there. And in my advanced, I'm telling it to position absolutely and position it to the left and to the top. So this is where you get a little more control. So using these settings, I can actually move that, say, closer or further away. Let's say on this particular one, I want that to be um, zero, but on vertical, I want it to be actually more above it, so or closer to it. So you can actually maybe move it there. So the top one's really close to the about us, the bottom one's right in the bottom right. So you can move these around uh, in the uh, just using the default settings um, in um, the Elemental UI. So there's an advantage in doing that. So the only difference between the top one and the bottom one is my positioning and my style. So in the style for the bottom one, I'm setting my right and bottom orders. And in the advanced, uh, I'm telling it to um, set it to the right and the bottom. And that's the only difference between those two. Uh, again, I can move that across if I want to, if I maybe, oops, maybe move it so that's in there if I want, some quirky little way of doing it. So if I update that, and then refresh, I'll just move that further in so this text sticks out from it. I mean, I can't see a design case where that would make sense, but that's the control you have by adding uh, additional elements at the top and the bottom and then positioning them absolutely uh, and then just styling them with the um, the size, uh, with the width and the height, and then the border uh, with uh, just the standard style settings. This does add more elements to the page. Um, I really like the first option where we just grab the container and we stick two classes on it. And then in the attributes, we override some of the CSS if we want to. Um, I would imagine, for example, here, I'm just going to make this background a darker color. Overlay, make the background say my, I will make it the primary dark. And let's say I want these, to be white, so I'd go into my attributes and I would set that to hash FFF for whatever we want. Again, we don't see it in here. But if I refresh, okay, so there we go. So these are now white, um, and um, I'm, I'm overriding those um, the width and the size of it using those variables. So that's pretty much the two ways I, I can see how you can do this. Definitely have a preference for using the CSS uh, with the before and after pseudo selectors over using additional elements, uh, but either one of them is a valid way of doing it. So hopefully that answers the question and gives you some great ways of being able to uh, do whatever you want to do.